Welcome back. This is a video for a post that I want to do about the letters S and U, in English, and the hieroglyph that is meant by these letters. This is Elizabeth I, there is a great movie about her and the true author of Shakespeare work called Anonymous I think you will like it, but there are many other curious things to know Abu the Royal, we could spend decades on the royals couldn't we? but I do want to go over this hieroglyph that I have found in English the Su and show you where it came from. Close up of St. John painting showing the serpent emerging from the chalice. Image, Image. painting St. John holding our chalice note the serpent in the cup. Alright, so here we go with the hieroglyph. It's just pretty simple. And uh, I got my TV phone camera here. My other one won't focus up real close like this. So it, and you get to hear my voice. So here's the U. And yes. Now the U has a number of 21, which is a 3 when you reduce it. And there is a way to tell if it's facing upward or downward if you find the 21 and another number. But because this is the chalice, this 3 is a downward 3 because that is the female triangle. Okay, so there's your U. And here is your S. Oh, I meant for it to go in here. All right. We'll make it like this. Okay, I hope you can see that. So there is your original serpent in the chalice. And, you know, there's just uh, no lack of code here. It, it does mean us, as in you and me, because this language was meant for the gods to speak. And it was adapted for commoners, but it also means the U.S. It means... Albus, which is white, us. It just goes on and on. <clears throat> but isn't that interesting? We will go and we'll go, you know, I'll tell you what is all the hieroglyphs that I know. I hope this video works. So I was looking at this also and thinking that it could also be like this. There's your chalice. Let's do a really good S snake this time. I believe these guys are small. We can stargate. And then let's take this and put it here. This is Orion. When you look at the um, Kuthos temple and they display it as the phallus, you know, I don't want to get too graphic here, cover your children's eyes, but in the Kuthos temple on the ground, you know, they show it like this. And they're just saying that this is Orion, that Orion seeded the chalice, it seeded the womb, that, that the DNA came from Orion. And this is the same thing that we see in the Washington Monument. In Washington, D.C., if you look towards the east, let's look towards the east, okay. If you look, you go to um, hiddenrecords.com, Wayne Herschel, he's where I learned this from, and he has really, really nice graphics. So, I just want to just point out that one of these is a 555 measurement, and one of these is a 666, and 6 over 5 is a basic measurement of many, many of our, um, the units that we're used to in our world from, a, from an English cubit, many, many other ancient and sacred measurements. Um, I learned this in the book from Scott on Scott called Taking Measure, and that is an expensive book, but it is really worth it. Okay, so anyway, I was just comparing the this concept of the chalice to this concept. Now, if you go on certain days, including the September 15th day, and um, July 4th apparently is another day, and Orion rises in the east, and apparently, I haven't seen this myself, but apparently it's tipped 
and this is where they get their phallus from. It's tipped and then it rises to vertical. And I think it rises to perfect vertical uh, December 24th or something like that. So on this perfect day, you can see the mystery star of Ra up there and then um, the other two suns, which are the trinity of suns. Looks like my phone's going black sometimes. So it's pointing right at it. This is the seeding event. This is why they have the penis in uh, I pet goat three, two, sorry, with the <laughs> with the three uh, seeds, I guess. And uh, the ancients left this mark for themselves just to remind them of who they were because I think they realized they were going to have memory problems. And so they did this. Now, I don't want to blabber on and on, but it is nice to finally be able to speak. I hope that this is actually working. But in, while we're on the subject of memory problem, um, memory issues, if you see my post about the hippocampus, and um, I think there's some video about a picture that I found in a Hathor temple recently. I don't know if I've published it yet, but it, the ram's horns. And you know, we have ram pickup trucks, we have ram everything these days. And uh, the Catholic Church makes it out to be a, a sign of evil, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm not going to say that there's not evil in the world, but I don't know if the Catholic Church is the one to point out evil versus not evil. So we need to keep our, our um, you know, set our morality aside for a minute and try to notice who's speaking and who is listening and uh, question these guys, because I'm not sure that this is a symbol of evil. You know, it may be a symbol of mischief, but I think this is a symbol of brain symbolism. I think it is symbolic of the hippocampus, symbolic of bringing memory through reincarnation. And they were very concerned about bringing memory through reincarnation because they left huge monuments to themselves. These are letters to themselves, like notes to self, you know, just not on paper. They make it huge to re-educate themselves about what they had learned in their last lifetime. So to them, memory through reincarnation will be very important. And I think this is a sign of a person who has this, like Moses is depicted with horns, and I think that is a sign that he has brought memory through reincarnation. So um, that's my short video on that. And so anyway, we'll go back to our chalice. This is our hieroglyph. So stay tuned. I hope to do many more hieroglyphs. I just learned, you know, mapped out about 10 last night. All right. Thank you. Talk to you later.